have the youth, the masculine youth of the world, thinking for themselves, that's pretty scary to a foreign. One of the biggest fatal mistakes any man or human being can make. To chop my head off and try and delete me is asinine in and of itself. Another thing, I'll give the game away. Here's your piece of paper. Going to cancel again, Logan? You're saying a call like that was made? 100%, the dude's a bitch. Lady of yours that you introduced to us yesterday said, this is my wife. I don't even know if I'm convinced you want to have five wives. And that's a very astute observation, and you are correct. But I won't believe in it. I don't want to believe in things that make me weak. Suddenly the most famous man on the internet, and then all of a sudden gone from you know what's unfortunate about the way the world is? Maths and statistics insist there's no way this can be broken. That unfortunately, half of the population are more stupid than average. That's the truth. There are a bunch of dumb people out there who just literally repeat what they're told. Absolutely, and I understand why they would say that. Now, what's actually interesting is Bucharest, the capital of Romania, where I live, is statistically 25 times safer than a city like London. It's not even a dangerous place. It's, a, it's the most Christian country on earth. 99.3% Christian in the last census. There's churches everywhere. It's highly religious. It's a very nice place. Like, it's just a, a different economic bracket. It's nothing to do about Romania specifically. You can go to any second world country in the world with a different economic bracket. The corruption is going to be more accessible. The price is lower. Humans are corrupt. Every single institution on the face of the planet that is run by humans, which is currently all of them, at some degree is corrupt. All of them. Whether it's doctors, financial, judicial, law and order, the monetary system, it's all completely and utterly corrupt. And to sit here and believe that any of them are just and fair, I think we've just learned in the last few years that we can see that even simple things like keeping people alive, even medicine is completely corrupt from head to toe, all of it is. So you have to understand that and then you have to look at the chessboard and go, okay, if it's all completely and utterly corrupt, and I understand that there are certain people who get to play the game on cheat mode. Do I want to be able to play the game on cheat mode if I'm going to try and be the best version of myself? Well, yes, I could possibly do that in Nigeria. I could play on cheat mode. I could possibly play on cheat mode in Croatia. I could possibly play on cheat mode here. Here, I have to stick to the rules. If I have to obey the rules of chess against a person who can move their pieces however they want, I'm going to be perpetually crushed for eternity. So it makes smart, that's just smart business sense to me to sit there and go, you know what? Fuck it. Let's, let's change the board. Let's move it out. Let's reset up the pieces and let's play this way. So if you accept that in a basic pickup game of basketball for $10,000 without referees and judges, humans are going to naturally avert to cheating to make sure they win. Do you think the people who are in charge of the world for the power and control of the entire populace and all of its resources are not going to consider cheating to win? You think it's not going to cross their mind to just go, you know what, let's just change this little hey, bit. I was thinking. You're going to sit right. there and believe, no, it's fair. Nothing is fair. It's nothing has ever been fair. I've, if you've lived a life of genuine hardship, the first thing you will learn is that nothing is ever fair. I've never seen a fair fight in the street. I've never seen a fair relationship. I've never seen a fucking person lose his girlfriend or lose her husband fairly. I've never seen a fair incident on the fucking road when someone gets crushed by a truck. The world is a very unfair place. And humans come along and we purport this idea that don't worry, if we're in charge, we'll make it fair. It's bullshit. Bullshit. Nothing is ever, ever fair. And the human inclination is to win as it should be. And the more powerful you are and the higher the stakes, the higher inclination to win as it should be. This is human nature. You wouldn't be able to put yourself in a position of power if you thought any other way. So if you're going to sit there and accept the basis that we're going to cheat in a basic basketball game, that people cheat in football games, that people cheat in poker, and people cheat in all this bullshit, and then say no, but they're not going to cheat to control the world, then you're asinine. Right. It's all a fucking lie. It's all a cheat. Um, where there's a correlation between people who are free thinkers and people who have opinions which differ from the norm and their testosterone levels. I don't even have seen this. But the higher your testosterone level, the more likely you are to stand up and say something that the group doesn't agree with. The basic premise behind it biologically is you're more prepared to defend your idea. If you stand up against five men and say, you're wrong, I believe this, at some point, and especially in history, that can become violent. So if you don't have the capability or at least the bravery to stand up and face the possibility of violence, you're more likely to just comply with the group thing. So they've done a whole bunch of studies that proves somebody who is combative, not in a negative way, but combative as a whole in regards to not physically afraid of having a of having a confrontation, let's say, is more likely to have an independent idea as opposed to somebody who is the complete opposite. They're just pure groupthink because fish, fish swim in schools, right? That's how they protect themselves. So it's an interesting point you have there. And also that can be extrapolated if you look at the political parties of the world or you look at the different ideas, etc. You can usually look at someone and kind of see their politics. Sometimes you can look at them and go, yeah, yeah, I get it. Right? So there's a lot of biology is a huge part to play with it. And yeah, I agree with you. And, and, and you're totally right. My view, like every other person's view on Earth, is bias. 
And I have a large degree of individualism and a large degree of I can fix this myself or I'll be okay by myself. And that's how I was raised. And it's also my genetic makeup. And you're right. I completely agree with you. And I understand that. And that's why each to their own. I'm not saying everybody should decide to go move to Serbia because you're right. There's mobsters in Serbia that will take advantage of a whole bunch of people completely. But for myself and my own personal chessboard, that's how I've set up life. And that's why the, the students who follow me and the kids I talk to, I say, listen, life is extremely difficult as a man. It's very fucking hard. There is no way I can tell you to win unless you're a top tier man. I can't sit here and give you a cheat code that allows you to stay a loser and win. I can only tell you what I've done. I became extremely wealthy. I became extremely capable. I became extremely smart. I developed a vast network of individuals that nobody wants to mess with. And I set up a life that makes me in difficult to damage. That's what I did. You're saying, how can I comply, 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 stay weak and stay stupid and be safe from, from tyranny? And I say to you, you can't do that. That's why I teach the tenants I teach. And that's also why I think they find me so threatening because I'm teaching people to, to, to do exactly that. I say, listen, there's no strength of mind or strength of opinion without strength of body. First thing you need to do is go train. Don't care what you think. Don't care what you think. Too small. First thing you need to do is go train. This number one. If you think two plus two is four, and I think two plus two is five, and we're gonna argue this to the end, it's gonna be five. So <laughs> you better go do something. News flash, two, two is five now. That's the reality, but that's the reality of Earth, right? And, and I teach kids this reality. I teach men this reality. And by even doing basic things like teaching young men to go and strong, be strong physically, which is, we I'd like to think we live in a world where that's all seen as a good thing. There are people in the world who sit there and go, wait, 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 making them physically stronger is going to affect our ability to change the narrative in their minds in real time with our matrix programming. That is negative. I had a man message me, a man emailed me saying that he was going to kill himself. I get about 10,000 emails a week. I don't answer all of them, but I answer some of them. This guy, his email was so short that I believed it. Subject was, I'm going to kill myself. And the thing is, I know you won't reply. I'm going to kill myself. I don't know what to do. That was the email. And I sat there and said, listen, my friend, I get a lot of emails. I don't know how serious you are. I want you to make me a promise. I'm going to guess that you're not in the best physical condition you could be in. I want you to make me a promise that you're going to get a six pack first and send me a picture of you with a six pack. And if you still feel like killing yourself after that, I don't know you. I can't tell you what to do. But I want you to get a six pack first. He emailed me back and started going back and forth, et cetera, et cetera. I convinced him to get to the gym and said, get a six pack, see how you feel. If you still feel like killing yourself, then I'm not telling you to kill yourself. I'm telling you that's what I would recommend. Start training. By the time he started sending me physique updates of him in a better condition, he started sending me huge emails of apology and thank you, saying you saved my life. I can't believe I was thinking of killing myself. I can't believe he changed. If that man would have emailed Logan Paul, would Logan Paul have given a fuck? He would have ignored the guy. You think he answers a single fucking email? He doesn't give a shit. All these fucking media figures, all these people who are good for the system, who are dancing on the devil and fucking sitting here talking about dangerous rhetoric and all the other bullshit. You think they'd fucking answer an email? They don't give a solitary fuck about the young men of the world. They would have left that man to die. And even if they would reply to him, what advice would they give? Go take antidepressants to watch my YouTube. They have no value to give a guy because they've never had a life of actual genuine struggle. People email me their long lists of all the bad things that happened to them and I reply, fantastic. You are so lucky. You have all the building blocks to become the exact kind of man you want to be. If none of this shit happened to you, when something else bad happens to you later, you wouldn't be able to deal with it. Fantastic. Mm. And he goes, no, but you know, this, this. He replied again with more excuses. I said, why are you making excuses? I just told you what happened to you is a good thing. You need to reframe your mind. Bad things happen to Batman. They killed his parents. Do you understand? That's why he's Batman. You've just told me you have the building blocks to become the most, you might become top G when I retire. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> what are you complaining about? He goes, well, what do I do? I said, you need to work. Take all that trauma. If you're truly heartbroken, my friend, and we've all been there as men, if you're truly heartbroken, you can't sleep. That means you're gonna get in fantastic yeah. shape. You better hit the gym. You have nothing else to do. But stop watching YouTube. Stop emailing me. I want pictures of you in the gym. Get to fucking work. Heartbreak's a fantastic motivator, as is depression, as is sadness. Great. Look at what's pissing you off and make sure it never happens again. If you were jacked and rich as fuck, she probably wouldn't have left your ass.